In today's video, I'm going to have a look at transition matrices. Now, transition matrices are used to describe how a system can change over a period of time. Now, an example of this that I'm going to use today is if I've got a system based on whether you're taking your own transport or public transport to work. For example, when I look at this, if I was to pick someone at random that brought their own transport to work, they've got an 80% chance of bringing their own transport to work tomorrow versus a 20% chance of bringing public transport tomorrow. Now you'll notice that each row here will always equal 100%. That's because the only two options that they've got to get to work is to either provide their own transport of some kind or to travel via the public transport option. Now, a transition matrix allows us to represent this information and use this information in the model of a matrix. To represent this, we would need a two by two transition matrix and we call that matrix, matrix T. So we say our transition matrix and we draw up a two by two matrix and we put our information as it's displayed here. So if you've got an 80% chance of bringing your own transport tomorrow, if you brought your own transport today, we'll represent that at the top part here. But we don't represent it as a percentage, we represent it as a decimal. So that'll be a 0 0.8. And here, we've got a 20% chance of bringing public transport if you brought your own. So this will be a 0 0.2. Now, if we add these two together, it'll equal 1, which is the same as 100%. We repeat for the same for the bottom, so it'll be 0 0.3 or 30%, and 70%, which is 0 0.7. Once again, that row will equal 1. So this here is what we call our transition matrix. Now, in order to use a transition matrix, we first need to know what the initial conditions or the initial state of our system actually were. So how many people were bringing their own transport to work versus how many people were bringing public transport to work. And we call this the initial conditions or the initial state. Now, when we refer to the initial conditions or the initial state matrix, we generally call this the S to the subscript of zero matrix, so that state matrix. And um, let's, for this example, say that we had 47% of our people that we interviewed come to work on their own transport versus obviously 53% that came via public transport. We can represent this as follows. So what we've got represented here is 47%, remembering that we represent as a decimal here, of our people have brought their own transport and 53% of our people have brought public transport on day zero, which is today, when we actually interviewed these people. Now, you could actually put the number of people here, but you have to put one or the other. You can't mix and match. So if you put people, the number of people here, you can't put the probability or the percentage of people in here as a decimal. Now, the reason why we do this is because we can now make predictions about what's going to happen to our state matrix from one day to the next. And we can do it by finding the new state matrix after n number of days, which to find that we would multiply the uh, initial state matrix by the transition matrix raised to the power of n, or the number of days. So, for example, if I want to make a prediction about how many people are going to bring their own transport versus public transport after one day, what I'd need to do for my S1 matrix, I would need to multiply the initial state matrix by the transition matrix raise the power of one day, which I'm not going to write here because the power of one is just t. So when I do that, I find that after one day, that we're likely to have 53.5% of people 
coming via their own transport versus 46.5% of people coming via public transport. Now, assuming that this transition matrix isn't gonna change, I can do this for any number of days. For example, if I wanted to do it after five days, I would look for the state matrix after five days, which is equal to the initial state matrix multiplied by the transition matrix multiply, uh, sorry, to the power of that five. Now when I do this, I find that it equals 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
bring their own transport or public transport, whatever the question we're dealing with is, um, based on a certain period of time. Now, the other phenomenon that we've discovered is this steady state phenomenon, where whenever we're dealing with this transition matrix, assuming that those conditions don't change, it will eventually come to a steady state where these values from day to day will no longer be changing. And there's two ways to find that transition state. You can compare one day with the next day and there shouldn't be much of a change. For example, we're actually comparing five days ahead here, but on the 10th day compared to the fifth day, there isn't too much of a change here. So we could say that this is approximately the steady state, or we could just raise this transition matrix up here to a really large value for n. Like we did here, we raised it to the 20th power, which then allows us to compare these numbers, and if they're the same as each other, we're going to have found our steady state. 